So I'm attempting to install two 100 watt EcoFlow solar panels on top of the second gen Toyota Sequoia. Now, these are the mounting brackets that come with the EcoFlow solar panels. The holes are already pre-drilled. However, I'm mounting these on top of the roof rack by a company called AL Offroad. And so oftentimes what happened is the mounting process is simple, but the bolts are not. So in other words, you have this standard bolt that a lot of people use. You have a bolt, you have a washer, and you have a lock nut. I don't like these. They become very cumbersome, especially when you uh, need to uh, dismount your solar panels or any sort of system. These will just twist and twist and twist. I prefer these. These are made by L Offroads, and they have this system that drops down in your tracks. You have a lock nut, you have a washer, you have a bolt. You simply twist and tighten. I prefer this over this. But oftentimes what happens is these bolts do not fit the standard holes that are already pre-drilled. So you're going to have to drill out these holes here. So I'm going to drill out this one. I did it a little bit, but it still didn't fit. So I ended up going up another notch as far as my drill bit, and I'm going to utilize this one. So let me go ahead and put this down here. I'm simply going to take it, and this is a soft metal, so you don't need nothing special to drill. Just drill straight. Let's get some more power in there. That's it. And then, let's see if it fits. Fits, right there. So now I can go ahead and get this in there, and uh, I have to drill, uh, pre-drill this hole, this hole, and the others on the opposing side because these are the holes I'm going to use for mounting. Alrighty, now that you know that, I prefer these over the others. You may have to open up those holes a little bit more. Stay tuned. I'm gonna go ahead and install these on top of this system. Here is the AL Off-Road roof rack. And here are the tracks. You can see I got one of the slide mounts in between the tracks here and one down there. And I'm going to install two EcoFlow 100 watt solar panels on top here. And once I do that, the wiring is easy. Stay tuned. So I want to show you how this system works. You can see the slide right there below. Remember this here? So it's right there below, and you simply go ahead and put on your lock washer and your washer, and you screw right into it. It screws right into it. And all you gotta do is tighten it up from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and look that. You can do it by hand. Look how it pulls. Look how it pulls. Same thing with the other side. But don't do it all the way, especially if you gotta, uh, you know, like slide your panels and whatnot and get to the opposing side because I'm going to um, go ahead and tie these in and then I'm going to push this panel over and put the other panel here. Stay tuned. So here's the finished install of the two Echo Flow 100 watt each solar panels for a total of 200 watts. And they sit nicely. I'm going to be running my wires along this side down into the cab and I'm going to get prepared to put together my um, solar setup inside, but it's gonna have a dual purpose. Although I'm going to be installing an inverter charge controller and all the good stuff inside, I will still be able to disconnect the wires and plug it into my portable EcoFlow um, devices and charge them. That way, I have dual purpose. So it fits nicely next to the 8x8 awning. And I have the Julica shower system here. 
I still have more space. I'll be putting my traction boards, which are my action tracks, uh, more than likely in the middle here. And then I'm going to put a jerry can here with dual purpose, dual jerry cans for a total of 10 gallons. I might put two, but I want to see how the first one reacts. These cans are made for the, um, for the forerunner, but I have to drill out some holes in the jerry can and that way I can mount it to my uh, Wombo bars here on the ALR off-road roof rack. And over to the right here, I'm going to be installing a Pelican case. Uh, I got to see how that works because I got these sort of uh, brackets that are mounted from the shower here. But I'll get it done or I may just go straight across this way rather than this way. But stay tuned. I have more coming. And now I have portable power. Someone, just one single person, asked me the question. When you put the solar panels on your roof and they're that low, how can you get your hands underneath it in order to uh, disassemble the wiring on the back of the solar panel so you can make the connections? Let me show you. For me, I have a sunroof. And depending on if you have your solar panels facing this way or that way where the wiring is you're gonna have to take a few cautions so this one is not undone I was just running one I'm gonna go ahead and connect them in series today and so I'm simply taking off the um, this wire here little twisties okay I'm simply taking it off. And once I take it off, then I can go ahead and make the connection. So now you see the wires hanging. And when you make the connection, when it comes to series, you wanna put a positive and plug it to the negative. You take your other positive and negative, and this is what's gonna um, attach to your, um, your cordage your cable that goes to your solar panel. If you were doing these in parallel, you would do positive to positive until a, let me show you. You would use this dual clamp here. Now they do make them where they have three on the ends, four on the ends and whatnot. So if you're hooking three or more solar panels up, but basically what you would do is let me show you the difference. If you were hooking your panels up in parallel and make sure you're following the uh, manufacturer's suggested rating, always check the open circuit voltage and whatnot and the amps on the back of your solar panel and look at your solar generator and see uh, what its maximum uh, solar intake is and you'll figure it out in no time. But if this was in parallel, here's what you'll do. Just remember, you get two of these Okay, you have one end that has dual negative and one end that has dual positive. You'll notice by the red rubber ring around them. Now, uh, don't always go by that because I've seen manufacturers where the red ring was actually, you know, on the negative. Believe it or not, I've seen that and it didn't line up right. So you will take your two positives here, positive and your positive over there. And they're simply going to insert right here okay so this will insert let me pull this over here I'm gonna try and do this with one hand because I don't have my other um, hand available but if I can do this I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this but we're going to try all right so there's one Here's the other one right here. There we are. Then you're gonna take the other two negatives and clamp them on here. And then you're gonna have these two ends left. Now there's your positive and negative that's gonna to hook to your solar cable, which is then going to be connected to your solar. Now if you were hooking these in series, which I'm going to do, 
you simply put the negative to the positive and the positive to the negative or both negatives to a positive. It's quite simple. So you're going to simply take a negative here and it's going to connect to the positive here. Let me do that really quick. Okay, that's complete. Then you're gonna take um, these two right here and you're simply gonna connect those to your solar cable. Let me show you that. But one thing I want you folks to know really quick, um, some of you um, may use the cable that comes with um, your solar panels. I know that if you have foldable solar panels from EcoFlow, you get a XT60i cable. Um, but if you buy the um, rigid solar panels from EcoFlow, you don't get a cable. But I have plenty of these around because I bought multiple solar panels, portable that is, from EcoFlow. But here's what I wanna tell you. Depending on the distance from your solar panel to your vehicle to go inside to connect to your solar charger, your solar generator, you may need a longer cord, okay? So this, um, I would say this is probably about 10 feet. I could be wrong, but it does work. I'm gonna show you something else. I also have a couple of 20 feet um, solar cables as well as uh, 50 feet and a couple of 100 feet that I purchased years ago. And um, depending on, you know, how far you want things to, to go, this is what you want. These are 10 gauge, just so you know. And that's a lot thicker than this, okay? A lot thicker. But these are adequate, okay? These are adequate. But make sure you understand that if you have uh, more solar panels in something with higher voltage, you know, what not higher wattage and higher output, you may want to go with a thicker cable, especially the farther you are away from the actual solar charger, your panels, that is. But let's go ahead and once again, here's that positive and negative end on the solar cable, and you're simply going to put this here going to put this here let me do that really quick so everything is hooked up in series one of the things I want you to know although this cable came from EcoFlow the positive side doesn't necessarily connect well to the uh, you know the um, the cable of the um, solar panel here the EcoFlow 100 watt solar panel it, it pulls off easy, let me show you. It's connected, right? If I can do this with one hand, see that? And that's because you gotta get a little uh, flathead screwdriver, a small one, and when you put this in and connect it, you push this out so that those little ridges right there, I don't know if I can get that in here, right there, they could literally line up with the outside. But anywho, this is how you connect it. And then you go ahead and connect it to your portable generator or your built-in solar system, whichever come, whichever you have. Alrighty, take care.